Hello everyone. I hope this message finds you fit and fine. My name is Shashank Tyagi and I welcome you all to Study IQ. Recently, Pakistan's Prime Minister Mr. Imran Khan visited China and he has signed an agreement to continue second phase of China-Pakistan economic corridor, which passes through Pak occupied Kashmir. It means a threat to sovereignty of India. Apart from this news, another news which was making round was comment made by Rahul Gandhi ji that it is policy failure of present government that China and Pakistan have come closer and that that's why the threat for India has increased. On this particular issue, we have re received a reply from our foreign minister, Mr. S. Jay Shankar. So to understand this whole picture, we have categorized our discussion in following heads. So Mr. S. Jay Shankar has said that there are various events, incidents in our history, which clearly say that China and Pakistan have been closer from way back. It's not a new phenomena. Now, China and Pakistan leaders have said that their relationship is actually higher than mountains, deeper than sea and sweeter than honey. So they have a lot to gain from this relationship. If you go back to the history, we found that Pakistan was among the first nation, first few nations which recognized this People Republic of China. So it means it's a good start in 1950. But there was another slump in the relationship when in 1954 to 55, in this period, Pakistan joined CETO and CENTO, means groupings backed by US. And the purpose was to counter this expansion of communism. It means now we have seen that here Pakistan is taking stand against China. So why the sudden change, my friends? In international politics, there's no permanent friend and no permanent enemy. What matters is national interest. This is realist perspective, how realist look at international relations. And on this basis, we can interpret this. So what Pakistan was gaining, so Pakistan was gaining support of US. And US was supporting Pakistan in terms of grants, in terms of weapons. So Pakistan took this route. Apart from this, when China was sending some troops into the Tibetan area and US considered that as a threat, so USA wanted to funnel some weapons to the Tibetan rebels. So Pakistan supported US at that point of time. So in those two incidents, you can see Pakistan is taking a stand against China, right? And in this period, we have seen that relationship between India and China was actually considered as a relationship which was a golden period. Hindi Chini Bhai Bhai was quite popular, Panchil agreement, right? So it was a golden period of India China relationship. But it was, this period was short lived. Within this period in 1956, we saw China and Pakistan forging a treaty of friendship. And what events unfolded later? Now, India was agreeing to the boundaries which were which were actually forced by these Britishers, right? But China was not agreeing to these boundaries. China was saying that these boundaries were made by imperial powers. I'm, I'm not recognizing that. So here, there was difference of opinion, disagreement on the boundary. It means territorial disputes were now visible on the surface. So from here, you can see the relationship between Pakistan and China is now is taking is going to take an upward trend from this period, right? So Sino-Pakistan relation is strengthened from this period. There was Sino-India War 1962, which was a setback for India, and this was an opportunity for Pakistan to have you know, you can say a strengthened relationship with Pakistan, and you can here understand that enemies enemy is your friend. So same philosophy was used by Pakistan. India, Pakistan's enemy. And if India's enemy is China, naturally, Pakistan's, you know, is going to have good relationship with China, right? They are having common enemy, India. Now, within this period, after the setback in 1962, Pakistan thought that it is time to resolve its own disputes, border disputes with China. And at that point of time, Pakistan gifted Shakskam Valley to China, which was an important part of Pak occupied Kashmir. So in that particular in that particular time, Pakistan resolved its border dispute in that area with China. 
Apart from this, Pakistan gave opportunity for China to have a meeting with Nixon and Nixon, him, Nixon, US President Nixon. And this particular meeting is considered as historical moment. According to Nixon, this meeting is going to change the world. And yes, it changed the world. After this meeting, we have seen an upward trend in the relationship between US and China. And this meeting changed the fate of China. And who played the role here? Pakistan played the role here, right? And in the same period, we see 1971 war, Indo-Pak war, liberation of Bangladesh. Here, Pakistan sought help from US and US supported Pakistan. And at that point of time, China was also aiding uh, Pakistan. So Sino-Pak trade relations and military ties paced at that point of time. Sino means China-Pakistan relationship actually enhanced. The period after that, I categorize it into era of nuclear cooperation and military ties because nuclear status of India played a role in China and Pakistan coming closer then. As you know, by this time, we were quite clear about this fact that China and Pakistan are totally, you know, in conflictual situation with us, right? And we need to have some deterrence with us. When I say deterrence, deterrence as the word means we should have something in our pocket. It means weaponry, some military might, so that we can deter our enemy. Our enemy should think twice or thrice before having any attempt into our territory. We did not want it to repeat the debacle of 1962. And that's why under the strong leadership of Indira Gandhi, we had Pokhran 1 test. And this test surprised many agencies, primarily US agencies were surprised how they actually missed on this fact that India was developing this capability. So Sino-Pakistan relations further strengthened after nuclear test because now Pakistan was of the view that China, India got this ability and now I should also develop this ability. So China started helping Pakistan develop its own nuclear energy technology. In this particular picture, one name becomes important that is AQ Khan network. A Pakistani nuclear scientist which was, who was working for a UK based firm which dealt in nuclear technology and it is said that he stole some of the drawings of centrifuges which are used for nuclear enrichment and he fled the country and he came to uh, Pakistan. So company was UK based but its base means its laboratory was in Germany from uh, where uh, this AQ Khan actually stole these drawings. Now the point is. These were just drawings, but technical know-how and the resources were required. It is said that China is the one which supported this AQ Khan network through shady markets to develop this nuclear capability. Apart from this, they, they also had this network, Karakoram Highway, developed in this particular time so that northern part of Pakistan can connect with, with uh, western part of China. And my friends, these infrastructures development plays, played a vital role in China and Pakistan coming together. Now, in September 1986, we saw China and Pakistan comprehensive nuclear cooperation agreement. As I told you, now relationships were getting forged in the taking into consideration nuclear power status that they were striving to develop. India conducted Pokhran. Right, Pokhran too. And in 1999, what happened? That now China supported Pakistan and established a nuclear reactor in Punjab province of Pakistan. So at this point of time, it is it was quite clear that China wanted Pakistan to develop as a credible adversary of India, so that they, there there can be a counterbalance to to the development of nuclear power of India, as we say in international politics. International politics is all about power politics. And since there's no common authority to assure you your security, you have to gain power so that you can develop your own security. And how much power is sufficient for developing that security? There's no such parameter. And that's why this balancing and counterbalancing of power come into play in international relations. Now, in 1999, you know, we had this Kargil war and here China favored Pakistan. In 2001 joint venture, 
Chinese Pakistani tank. So it means military might is getting developed for Pakistan by the support of China. In 2007, Sino-Pakistan joint venture, multi-role fighter. So J-17 Thunder FC, a fierce dragon. So it means, again, the prime relation, you know, tactic is that we need to develop the weaponry for Pakistan. Counterbalancing strategy. So with the help of China, Pakistan developed not only nuclear project, but also strengthened its military power as per the examples which we have recently discussed. BBC famous journalist Gordon Correra says that if you subtract China from Pakistan's effort for nuclear development, then there is no nuclear program for Pakistan, such as the role of China in Pakistan's nuclear program. It is not like the way we conducted our nuclear program. In Chinese Defense Ministry, they say that Pakistan and China's military-military cooperation is of prime importance to actually offset the risk which are there. So which risk they, are, they were talking about? They were talking about India and military-military cooperation. Why? Because they wanted to offset the risk which India can pose for them. Now, in 2013, China financing two high-capacity nuclear reactors in Karachi, another phase of this nuclear cooperation-based relationship. 2020, China signed defense pact with Pakistan and the two nations elect celebrated 70 years of their friendship. Now, apart from this nuclear cooperation, economy also plays an important role, right? Take a look over this route from Shanghai to Kashgar to Gwadar. And all of you must be aware of this fact. Who is the major investing agency in Gwadar? Who is developing Gwadar for Pakistan? China is developing Gwadar for Pakistan. And the major concern for India is that, that, uh, that state-owned agency of China is managing Gwadar. So it means it is like government company of China managing Gwadar. So you never know that how Gwadar can be used as a, you can say, as a location to, you can say, put threat over the Western corridor of India. There's one common saying that China is actually encircling India. We call it a string of pearls theory. It means Gwadar being one location, Hamban Tota being another location. So that's how, and CPAC over here. So here, and an uncircling strategy is going on. Although India has its own counter strategy to, to that. We are going to talk about it in another video. As of now, we need to talk about how China and Pakistan relationship are developing and how they are impacting India. In, in 1950 to 2000, what we have gained, that much of the investment in, by China in nuclear defense and infrastructure in Pakistan was based on China's debt trap policy. It means give so much debt to Pakistan that they will having you know they will stifle in paying you back and when they are going to stifle in paying you back then what option they have they have to agree to the terms and conditions which you propose because they won't be having any way out so here you can see economics is playing an important role for enhancing geopolitics right so building of the godar china is investor trade the trade we're talking about, the US billion dollar, 20, more than 20 billion US dollar trade is going on, right? And the theory says that if two nations are enhancing their trade, then there is less likely that they will go into conflictual situation. The disputes may be resolved in easier manner if these two nations are able to develop complex interdependence between them, right? So from 1959, specifically 62, you have seen that upward trend is going on in China-Pakistan relationship. It is not a new phenomena. You cannot say it is just due to some policy failure of present government that China and Pakistan have come near, right? And you should know that this particular trade route this particular route is going to help China as well as Pakistan, considering if, if, if China uses this particular route, then it is not feasible to actually send their goods in these territory by using this particular route. If they use this particular land route, then this is an opportunity 
to also develop the areas which are you know adjacent to this particular trade route right so they have a long term vision in this regard apart from this in 2006 china pakistan free trade agreement happened it means now china can easily sell its goods and you can say in the territory of pakistan and pakistan is also going to get same benefits but free trade agreements are majorly used when both the parties means benefits can be en enjoyed only when both the parties and all the parties are have calculated that they have ability to sell their products in the other territories otherwise chinese market is going to capture your major market share now in 2008 china builds railway through karakoram highway linking china's rail network china's rail network to gadar port you can see kashi and gwadar we are talking about china right so road network and rail network infrastructure a road to prosperity and strengthen relationship now in 2010 china donated 260 million dollar in flood struck pakistan sent four military uh, helicopters for rescue operations so another you can say a step to uh, say you, you can say they can be considered as a symbol of their friendship now in 2013 the point i was saying that godar's management given to state run chinese overseas port and it is a matter of great concern for india right apart from this 2013 trade between china and pakistan hit approx 12 billion dollar 2013 coming up to cpac will connect pakistan with china and through this what china wants china want to penetrate into central asia central asian market using this right and you know that we also have our plan to penetrate central asian market through chabahar port which is near to gwadar right but recent debacle in afghanistan has delayed our prospects but our vision is sharp let's see how things unfold there now objective what is the objective of this cpac china pakistan economic corridor from where our, this discussion started objective is reduce time curbing pirates you know attacks through ships china can directly use this trade route right distance and bad weather all of these you can say struggles can be offset by this particular use Achha. now a surprising fact is that pakistan got into gray list gray list of FATF financial action task force and on what allegations China entered into gray list because of Pakistan being you know there were allegations and there were credible evidences that Pakistan has been harboring terrorists and its institutions are being used to favor terrorists right so Pakistan went into gray list and there is another blacklist you know if but there's no course correction then there can be blacklist so it will impose more sanctions on pakistan the support which it was getting from us and other parts the, those supports are going to stop but in whose leadership it happened china was in the chair what does it show that china is there but china will not you you can say china is not going to threaten its image china is not going to prove that china uh, is illogical when it comes to supporting Pakistan because China is an expansionary power. China is a revisionist power, right? So China also need to take care of the stature it is having. So other than economic fast, economic East Turkmenistan is movement, which is a threat to you know this this part of Pakistan and this part of China, Zing Zhang region of China, where Uyghur Muslim population has been marginalized. And this area has given challenge to the current regime of China. China says that they are getting support from Pakistan based terrorist groups. So terrorism from Pakistan is a problem for China as well. Apart from this, during COVID times, China has given support to Pakistan by supplying necessary items like oxygen concentrators, cylinders and masks. But the major, you can say, shift in this power dynamics is coming from this change in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, the democratically elected government was toppled down by Taliban. And Taliban is saying, trust us, right? But who can trust Taliban? That is a point of question. Now, PACK is circulating. Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, and Kashmir. As you know, 
that Taliban got support from Pakistan, right? And if China enters into, or you can say penetrate deeper into Afghanistan by maintaining a matrix with Pakistan and Taliban, then it can create serious concern for Indian interests. Because India has invested heavily in when it comes to diplomatic potential has been invested in Afghanistan. We have invested in creating goodwill among Afghanistanis. We have invested in Iran Chabahar to penetrate into, or you can say penetrate into the market of Central Asia. If Chinese presence get bigger, then what we could have gained from Afghanistan would be on backtrack. So that's a cause of concern. Now, so you can take a look. Chinese petroleum is establishing their base there. They have their assets there. India also has a commercial interest there. We have one, one of our PSU, Sale, Steel Authority of India Limited, having establishment there in partnership with Afghanistan, Afghanistani government of that time. Let's see how things you know unfold in coming days. But the point is, keeping into picture the Chinese assertiveness and its close relation with Pakistan, it is quite clear that threat is enhancing, threat is increasing. But my friends, geopolitics is like a chessboard. You don't comment on what move others are making. You have to think of what counter move you can make, right? And are we making some counter moves? Credible ones? Yes, we can see that. India's Indo-Pacific strategy is an example to that. AUKUS, another efforts which were made by say US, UK and Australia and Quad where India is there. So these are some efforts which India is making to counter this Chinese and Pakistan threat which is coming in. Apart from this, there can be four key ways which can be taken into consideration. These are coming from, you can say, idealist perspective. One, leadership means all three nations, China, Pakistan and India, should take into account that we need to have good bilateral and trilateral relations. This way we can prosper, this way we can bring peace. We need to develop consensus. Second, transmitting. As we know that Pakistan is not just one government, means uh, it is, there are multiple centers of power in Pakistan. It means whatever consensus we make, it needs to be transmitted to various layers so that cooperation and outcomes can be ensured. Apart from this, we need to shape positive momentum in this area. Apart from this, we need to integrate, integrate in terms of economic, integrate in terms of technology share. Because as I told you, when you enter into complex interdependence, many ongoing disputes get resolved in phased manner. So these points can be used when we talk about way forward. See you in the next video. Till then, keep learning, keep growing.